The great King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon had a dream. He dreamed of a statue. The statue's head was gold, its chest and arms silver, its upper thighs bronze, and its legs iron. But the feet were a mixture of iron and clay. The gold is Babylon, the silver is Medo-Persia, and the bronze is Greece. The iron is Rome. Rome was as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron crushes and shatters all things. Rome crushed Greece and was so strong that the Romans crucified enemies of the empire for all to see. Rome was a republic with much splendor and intelligent discussion. They had architecture that lasted millennia. So, they thought everyone else in the world will want to be like us. This was true for the rest of Italy. The Italians brought into the empire were the iron legs of the statue. But barbarian tribes were much different. They were the clay. They lived in huts and followed tribal leaders. But the rest of Italy had become loyal subjects of the empire, so the Romans thought barbarians could become Romans too. Of course, it was foretold hundreds of years earlier, in that you saw the iron mixed with common clay. They will combine with one another in their descendants but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not combine with pottery. The Romans tried intermarrying with barbarians. They formed a more diverse military, and even had some barbarian politicians. Since they were not quite as insanely stupid as us, the Romans did not allow women to vote, hold office, or fight in the army. But they still believed in diversity, so their death was imminent. Now, I'm sure Pajama Boy and Big Red have very different opinions than me. And the Big Daddy in Rome literally bows to black people. But if you listen to any of them, you're kind of retarded. History records what happened to the diversity-weakened Roman Empire. 200,000 Visigoth war refugees stood at the Danube River, the East Roman border. They loved nothing more than a good old-fashioned rape and pillage, but there was an even more terrifying tribe that forced them to flee. The Romans thought about it and said, I'm not racist, but we need some common-sense sword control for these murderous Visigoths. So the Romans let them in only if they promised to give up their weapons. The Visigoths promised they would, were brought across the river, and then immediately bribed Roman officials to let them keep their swords. Visigoth diversity went well for about five minutes. Tribal leader Alaric was at a banquet with a Roman official. Then a group of Visigoths attacked the city, and thinking Alaric had planned the attack, the Roman official ordered him to be killed, as well as all the other Visigoths that attacked the city. Alaric, being a badass barbarian, drew his sword and fought his way out of the city to the nearest Visigoth camp. He explained what happened, and the Visigoths said, Fuck being Roman, let's rape and pillage our way to Rome and then burn it to the fucking ground. And that is what they did. If Rome had not been so weakened by diversity, maybe Alaric would have been stopped. But once this happens, it's already the beginning of the end. This? This is a total free fall off a cliff, just waiting to hit the ground. We, like Rome, have been weakened by diversity to the breaking point. But few will realize it until America has been burnt to the ground. And know this, a nation can be beaten in war and live, but diversity? Diversity kills nations.